regular meeting of the Mobile Village Board to order. Please rise and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Here. Here. Motion would be in order to select a chairman pro tem. I would uh, make that motion that the senior trustee may stop me. Chair of the meeting. Sorry. Roll call. Okay, before we get started, I want to uh, say something here. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that uh, Dan, uh, or Mayor Tobos, is uh, still in the hospital. He's in the hospital with double pneumonia. So uh, we are all sending his prayers and uh, best wishes for him to return as soon as he possibly can. Okay, next item on the agenda is the public hearing regarding the 2013-2014 appropriate ordinance. I have a motion to open the public hearing meeting. I'll make that motion. Second. Roll call, please. Gray? Yes. Horn? Yes. Granter? Yes. Top? Yes. Stockton? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Administrator. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, defer to uh, Dave Shutter from uh, the firm of uh, Lecky and Associates to present the appropriation. Good evening. Uh, tonight I'd just like to um, summarize some of the higher level points on this and then we can certainly open it up for Sorry, for further discussion. Uh, this process is the culmination of uh, a month or so of work with the administrator department heads um, going through line item expenditures, um, our support on the revenue projection, of course, um, to determine what funding sources are available to the village for the year. Um, like in prior years, I believe this budget is very conservative. Um, the revenues, I think, are, if anything, understated. Um, the expenditures are overstated. Uh, I believe the actual results will be favorable to what's projected tonight. <clears throat> and I'd just like to go over, on a summary level, um, what each of the funds look like. The first fund is the general fund, or the corporate fund, that's the primary operating fund of the village. The budgeted revenues are about $3.2 million. The expenses are about $4 million, which would leave a deficit of about $800,000. Again, I believe that's a conservative number, and I believe it has some capital expenditures in there, um, particularly the, the police station repairs of about $500,000. Um, even if this deficit does come to fruition, the village has sufficient reserves to absorb it. Um, the projected reserves at the end of the period would still be $2 million, or about 50% of your expenditures. The uh, special revenue funds, which consist of the road and bridge fund, motor fuel tax, as the liability insurance, and the IMRF, those would have budgeted revenues of about 2.4 million and expenses of about 2.8 million. That leaves a deficit of about just under $500,000. And again, due to 
um, a lot of capital expenditures in the village. Uh, at the end of the period, you'd still have reserves of well over 800000 in that fund, which would be about 30% uh, of the expenses. The enterprise funds are the garbage fund and the water and sewer fund. You'd have budgeted revenues of a million four and expenditures of about a million nine. Um, at the end, you would still have reserves of about 8% of expenditures in that fund. Um, lastly, you have the bond and interest fund and the pension fund. Uh, those two are showing um, significant reserves at the end of the year as well. Um, at this point, I'd like to open it up for more detail. Does anybody from the public have any uh, comments, questions, concerns? If you do, uh, step up to the uh, microphone. David Holston, 5326 West Main Street, Monique. Um, two questions of things I don't see in the budget. I just want to clarify or have, have clarified. Uh, number one, the um, village employees that are using uh, personal vehicles for village business, um, how will that be expended? And uh, what's the, where will that show up on the budget for the next year, I believe? You have, for example, the mayor has a vehicle currently that he will, I understand, will not be used, and there was another vehicle that was turned in, so there's a possibility that personal vehicles may be used. And mileage, I believe, at the government level now is 50 cents a mile. I, I have a general reply to that. Uh, during the budget process of uh, committee meetings and so forth, uh, there is not a request for an additional line item. Uh, should those expenses come to fruition, uh, we do have a miscellaneous line item uh, that uh, appears on, on this budget, uh, this appropriation, and uh, in the future, if those are continued expectations of expenses, we would then uh, program that in uh, as a separate line item for expense. Do you know, Mr. Wallace, how many miles were put on those two vehicles this year? I have no idea. Sorry. Rough idea? No. I have mileage. Mileage at all. Okay. Uh, the, the vehicle that I use, we could calculate it backwards probably by the amount of fuel consumed, um, you know, which, okay. which wasn't that much actually. But, right. yeah. Well, just again, at 50 cents a mile, 20,000 miles becomes $10,000. So just something to be mindful of in approving the budget. Uh, there's nothing in here that I see that is planned for or budgeted for next year for personal use of vehicles and it raises the question, will somebody be using a personal vehicle and getting gas back here at the tank instead, which would be a serious concern from the public, I think, if you do that. Second question is one of the issues that came up during the recent um, election was parks and recreation. Uh, a number of candidates, including the slate that won, so I'll direct this question toward those people that are here tonight, indicated they wanted to spend more time and money in parks and recreation. Is there any additional money in this budget for next year for parks and recreation, and if so, where and what's the plan? Same question I had. I looked for it. I couldn't find it. On page four. There's currently, currently I'm here on page four. This is a program expenses of $2,000 events, $2,000 uh, would be in that area. Uh, there's other that would be available for that. That's what, what we're told. So there's two thousand dollars for parks and recreation for next year. There's two thousand dollars under events, and then two thousand dollars under program expenses. Okay. So Four. there's two different areas under parks. Four thousand. If I may add to that, um, it will come up later tonight. Uh, at this point, the Parks and Rec Committee 
Uh, I'm just focusing on getting our parks back up and running as far as our kids not going in and standing in the mud. Um, and again, I was talking to Superintendent Prezell about this, and we'll come up later. We will re be revamping these parks, hopefully all three of them this summer, to look like Fireman's Park. Is there money in the budget, Trustee Greg? Yes, there is. Where is that at? What line item? That would be under building and grounds line item. And if you give me one moment, I can find that for you. That's on page three. <coughs> And there is a uh, park, uh, B and G maintenance, it's called. And there's forty-five thousand dollars allocated for that type of work. Okay. So that forty-five thousand is intended for parks and recreation for the parks themselves. That is correct. Okay. Very good. Thank you. That's all I have. Anybody else? Hi, Kenzie Coney, 5154 Park Lane. Um, my overall question is with your excesses and reserves and everything, basically the village is in pretty good financial state right now, right? Correct. That's all I want to know. Thanks. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, if I might, an explanation to the public. You heard uh, some uh, deficits uh, in certain funds and so forth, and um, the appropriation ordinance is just that. It is the appropriation to spend those funds. It doesn't mean that you have to spend those funds. So there's a difference of, of uh, if, you, if you don't appropriate the funds, it's very difficult to spend those without coming back and reformulating the budget. Um, but if you open, if you make those appropriations now and you do not fulfill those appropriations by spending that amount of money, then there's no harm, no foul in that. Um, the same approach was taken last year, and uh, the village ended up uh, in the black and, and you know, did not overspend uh, as each expenditure uh, passes through this board at every board meeting. So uh, they keep a close eye on, on the expenses as they take place as well. This is a snapshot for the over the, the entire year. Uh, so as you can understand, um, sometimes you know it's going to be difficult to um, get every expense exact on uh, looking uh, 12 months into the future for the uh, fiscal year 14. But um, uh, so therefore we hit these appropriations and, uh, and uh, then the board watches the expenditures on a uh, board meeting by board meeting basis. So if there's any further questions with that. I'm happy to answer those. And again, we have uh, Dave Shutter here uh, from our auditing firm. So, anybody else from the public? Okay, at this time, I make a motion we close the public portion of this uh, meeting. So moved. Second. Four. Yes. Cranter. Yes. 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 Okay, um, next item is open to the public, agenda items only. Please limit your comments to three minutes. You must come to the podium and give your name and address. Okay, next item is the consent agenda. I need a motion on the floor to accept the consent agenda. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Cranzer? Yes. Top? Yes. Stockton? Yes. Farquhar? Yes. Ray? Yes. Park. Yes. Next item is communications from the clerk's office. I have nothing. Okay, next item is administration. Administrator's report, Mr. Wallace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have a couple of items. Uh, one item listed is the discussion of liability, property, casualty, workers' comp insurance for fiscal year 2014. For that discussion, I have brought forth, uh, uh, asked um, Mike Alicia uh, to attend. Um, and uh, Mr. Alicia is the uh, uh, vice president, senior vice president uh, with Mesero Financial Group. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to go over the uh, insurance uh, renewal with you. I know it's everybody's least uh, favorite subject, and 
Uh, originally, we presented the renewal about a month ago at the Southwest Agency for Risk Management Board meeting. And right prior to that uh, presentation, my colleague Ann Carroll and I noticed that there was something wrong with the data. So what we had to do was go through each and every uh, claim that Swarm has had since uh, about 2005, go through it and make sure it's all right. So when we presented the renewal back in uh, March, we were, uh, we were presenting a 12% increase for the village of Moni. So the insurance would go from 184,910 to 206,234, which would be 12%. Well, yesterday I got the revised numbers from, and I have some very good news for Moni. That number is dropping down. So Moni's uh, insurance last year again was 184,910. It's going to be 186,582. And for municipal uh, insurance renewals, that's excellent. Typically, we're seeing in the marketplace right now between 10 and 15 percent. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the economy. Uh, typically, insurance carriers make 8 to 10 percent off of investment income, which nobody's making right now. When they make that 8 to 10 percent, they hedge it against the losses that, um, that have occurred. So the market's getting right, uh, really tight right now. Workers' compensation market in Illinois is probably uh, getting worse as it's going on. Workers' compensation, the Illinois is probably one of the three worst work, workers' compensation states, and we don't see any light at the end of the tunnel right now. Uh, also, you had a couple claims. Uh, why is that number up at 186? You had a number of workers' compensation claims and law enforcement claims that are uh, directly affecting your numbers. Uh, workers' compensation is mainly driving that. Uh, for every dollar that you pay in premium, the carrier is paying $2.45 out. So they're basically losing uh, money uh, on that. Uh, we do have a loss control program in place to try to prevent losses, but this is why we have insurance, because of these. These are not uh, funny type of losses, they are legitimate injuries. Uh, any questions? Are there any questions? So uh, this this invoice that we received uh, is going through. Um, why does it go through uh, Dan Hawtrey's office? Is he your carrier here? In no, Dan Hawtrey. Uh, the Village of Moni is part of a risk managing purchasing group called the Southwest Agency for Risk Managers. There are nine members. Dan Hawtrey is the treasurer of Swarm. He happens to be a uh, certified public accountant as well. Okay. And one other question. Sure. You submit these bills to us, invoices to us, uh, on a yearly basis, is that correct? Correct. The, uh, the process is, is we take the invoices that we, we're the insurance broker. Yeah. So the invoices that the carrier, the insurance carrier bills us, we in turn bill Swarm, which would be Dan Hawtrey. Dan Hawtrey then breaks out the bills per your allocation. So that number that you quoted for this year, 186, uh, that, I don't see that on here. I see uh, that's not the total. Uh, yeah, the, the bills that you're probably looking at right now are incorrect. It was sent out a few weeks ago that those were incorrect, and I literally just got the correct data yesterday. Say that number one more time, 186? 186, 582. 582. Okay. Oh, I like that one much better. Yes, that's a lot nicer. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Chairman, if I might, uh, additionally, uh, for everyone's uh, information, this is uh, this amount is funded through the Insurance Liability Fund. That Insurance Liability Fund is an actual levy on our on our taxes that we pass back in December. So that's that's how that this bill gets gets funded virtually. 
So, really, that's just uh, No, this was for information only. We will get a new invoice. That invoice will come through the normal billing process of the village uh, once it's received. Great. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Chairman, uh, next on my list is a, um, uh, for informational purposes only, if you will, um, we're going to be placing on, we know that, that, that uh, our community and, and surrounding communities have had, have had heavy rainfall and there is some, uh, there has been some, uh, uh, some damage uh, received uh, both by the village and by individual residents as well. And we will be posting on our, um, although the area has been declared by uh, the governor as a uh, uh, disaster area, it has not been federally declared. And at this point, there are no federal funds from FEMA available. Um, and, but in preparation or anticipation that that may be uh, coming down the pipeline, there are some things that residents can do to protect themselves and prepare for this. And number one would be to please document everything that you do. Um, and if you throw things out, you take pictures, uh, contact your insurance agent, do everything that you can do for documentation purposes. Uh, the next item is that there will be a, uh, and I don't see it in here, um, Dave, if you happen to have that, but we will be posting on our marquee, and you can uh, get it available here at the village. Um, the, uh, there's a website in Will County that you can go to to log your personal information uh, and loss on there. And what that does is it helps Will County uh, get together a tally um, to be looked at as FEMA approaches Illinois and takes a look at, at some of the flooding issues. So uh, at this point, again, there aren't any funds available to help, uh, help offset any of that damage, but uh, there very well may be in the near future. And uh, the website uh, in, in question there that you should go to is www.willcountyema.org. And there should be some uh, steps to follow on there, and some form to fill out, and uh, uh, just be as, as precise as you can. Sometimes you have to be a little generic. That's fine. But uh, Will County uh, Emergency Management Agency is working to get an overall picture of what has taken place in Will County so that they're ready uh, should a federal declaration come down the pipeline. I believe that wraps up my report, sir. I'm sorry, and, and if we could, uh, the sooner the better. Um, you know, Monday, they're calling for Monday for a deadline. It may be extended, but I wouldn't count on that. So if we can do that over the weekend or the rest of this week, that would be very beneficial. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next item is mayor's agenda. Nothing. Engineer's report. No report at this time, sir. Next item is attorney's report. Mr. Chesley. Thank you, Your Honor. I have three items for board consideration. The first item is the ordinance for the appropriation for the fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2013, ending April 30th, 2014. Obviously, we had a public hearing tonight. Received their input. The ordinance was duly, the public hearing was duly published. If the board passes the ordinance tonight, we will then have to file it with the county clerk. Uh, but it's up for the board review and consideration. We did meet all the guidelines, uh, as Mr. Shutter and Mr. Wallace have done, by preparing the notice and also having them available the ordinance for inspection. Order somebody, please. I make a motion that we accept ordinance 1638. So moved. We need a second. I make a motion. Oh, second. Okay. Sorry. Any discussion? Yes. Stockton? Yes. Farquhar? Yes. Gray? Yes. Horn? Yes. Cranzer? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> the second item is the ordinance approving salaries uh, for fiscal year 2013-2014. 
there should be one change in there, though. Salaries from Mr. Bussey and Mr. Twilley, I believe Patrol Officer Bussey and Patrol Officer Twilley, is $16 an hour versus $14 an hour. But everyone else's job is correct at their salary is set forth in the accounts of the board's consideration. Board is Yes, okay. I make a motion to accept ordinance 1639 with the uh, two changes to the uh, police officer's salary from 14.04 per hour to $16 per hour. I'll second that. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Second. Yes. Firepark? Yes. Gray? Yes. Horn? Yes. Ranzer? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Anna. The last item, I know the board gave me a directive, but the last meeting to prepare a development agreement between ourselves, meaning those of money, and Culver's, uh, I need to have a little more uh, work to be done on this. There has been some changes with, pertaining to how it's supposed to be set up from a state standpoint. Therefore, I ask the board to table this for further consideration. Sure. 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 Prior to tabling, uh, uh, council, is, is it, would it be appropriate for to have any discussion on it at all? We do have a representative of KJT Properties here, yes. uh, Katie Smith. Uh, Katie, if you, if you don't mind stepping to the podium, gives the opportunity for any of the trustees to ask any questions. And uh, uh, she was uh, uh, attempting to attend our last meeting, but uh, due to circumstances, just couldn't get here. So. Uh, Katie Smith, 23180 Volek Road. Okay, I'm sorry, can you just briefly describe, you know, the money situation, what you're looking for from the village, just so we can refresh our recollection? Um, well, I'll do my best. I'll ask Eric from McCann to help me out uh, if I'm not specific enough. Um, my understanding of this is uh, for stormwater purposes, we're looking at going way over budget in order to be compliant with the requirements for stormwater. And so what we're looking to do is um, to ask for assistance from the village at this time to help with the stormwater project. And in return, we will donate the property at the front of our location back to the village that I understand the county has the intention of purchasing. Um, that would then reimburse the village for their assistance to us. Any trustees have questions? I'd like, <clears throat> I'd like the administrator, if you would, to explain the other options we're working on. Sure. Um, generally, uh, in, in a nutshell, that description <coughs> is, is correct. Um, I have been working with the county highway department in an effort to get this resolved and uh, thus far has, have met with negative results. However, um, through the assistance of, of uh, Trustee Farquhar, we've been able to contact our county board member, and actually there's a meeting scheduled for tomorrow that will allow us to um, better uh, show and explain the situation that exists there, that number one, this property is the last developable property it is substandard in size and therefore is not required to have um, stormwater detention uh, by the Will County Stormwater Management Ordinance. However, through the Will County Highway Department, they are requiring a release rate of stormwater no greater than exists now. <clears throat> when you improve property, you are going to increase the stormwater runoff. Uh, what we are asking and uh, have asked by way of letter to the county highway department is not to let the stormwater run off as it may it's simply to um, harness that stormwater and and we've asked for an increase in the release rate of that stormwater uh, by a marginal factor uh, that immediately discharges into a will county storm sewer goes under Moni manhattan road to the north probably around 50 or 60 feet, and then daylights. Uh, so there is no downstream effect to anyone who is, who is on the stormwater management system. There is, um, uh, 
you know, no no downside effect other than if there would be one, it would be the culvers itself. Um, the culvers project is, uh, as I said, they're looking to reduce the stormwater uh, uh, holding requirement from 6,000 cubic feet to 2,500 cubic feet. Um, that's a lot when it translates to underground storage. Uh, so that's what we're hoping to resolve tomorrow. We have a meeting scheduled, as I stated earlier, and um, I believe that there is an opportunity to turn this into a win-win for everyone. That would be uh, an increased release rate for uh, uh, the project. It would be that Will County immediately gets their right-of-way that they're going to require at some point in the future, and um, the village would get a, uh, a uh, nice new project and would save taxpayer dollars uh, by not having to invest in that at this point. Trustee, if that sums it up, that's our explanation. So, Anybody else? Sure. How much land would be donated to the village? Uh, it's my understanding the front 25 feet of uh, property. What's on the bottom of the sheet? No, um, I really I can't remember the width of the lot there. <coughs> oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Do we have a value for that um, piece of property? Uh, we do, based on the, uh, at, at the last meeting. That, that, that set aside, not the entire lot, but the part that we go to. We'll yes, sir. Uh, based on the, la or at the last meeting, I did provide, and I'm sorry I didn't bring it with me, but I did provide a spreadsheet that, based on the purchase price of the property and the square footage that was being uh, uh, anticipated to be donated to the village, um, I was able to apply that square foot, cost per square foot ratio onto that. I, I just can't remember what that was. Mm -hmm. I can tell you it was not $40,000. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that, but that's the best I can say at this point. <laughs> Leave it to council to have something. Uh, 26 feet uh, uh, right of way. Give me one moment, please. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, uh, Attorney Gracheski, but I my spreadsheet isn't attached, so. Sorry, still don't have those answers. I'm sorry. Anybody else? Thank you. So, we still look at the table list just for the next meeting, just so it stays back up on the agenda? That's the attorney's request, yes. Okay. Uh, I need a motion on the floor to uh, table this uh, Culver's Development Agreement until 5 8 13. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Both of those? Farquhar? Yes. Gray? Yes. Horn? Yes. Cranzer? Yes. Pack? Yes. Pack? Yes. That's all I have now. Yeah. Okay, committee's reports. Uh, finance is Trustee Stockton. They have no report. Um, please, Trustee Horn. No report tonight. Public Health and Trustee Gray. Uh, just as it came up a little bit earlier tonight, I uh, have been in contact with uh, Mr. Grisell and Mr. Wallace as far as the parks getting them up and going. They do have uh, some stuff already in stock and we will be getting the parks up and running, so including my kids are not standing in the mud when we get a little bit of rain. Uh, that's under my report. Yes, sir. Hold property, Trustee Farquhar. Nothing. Yes, sir. Jordan Bridge, Trustee Pop. No report. I'm sorry. <laughs> Water, <laughs> Trustee Cranzer. No report this evening. Economic Development, Mayor Tolo, any <laughs> reports? Unfinished business? Um, 
finish business? Any new business? I just have one thing. Um, this Saturday from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m., the Will County Land Use Department will be at Cremoni High School collecting old broken electronics and household hazardous waste. That's at the high school this weekend from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. Uh, next item is open to the public, not agenda items. Please limit your comments to three minutes. You must come to the podium and give your name and address. I just, what you had talked about before about flooding and registering on that website and whether it goes into FEMA, I just want to understand that a little bit so that everybody in the village understands that if they did have water damage, that going to that Will County website, is that somehow going to hook up if FEMA makes their declaration or do you have to do something else? That that my understanding is that will help support the need for FEMA intervention. Okay, so as many people that does it will give us a better chance of getting noticed and then exactly. Okay, because exactly. I had talked with someone on the train, they said go to your village, get on a list, start making lists. So rather than come up here and put your name on it, go to that website, fill out whatever you need to so they see how many people were affected, which will give us a little bit more strength in the Exactly. Okay. You are correct. I just want to clarify that. Thank, Thank you. Else. Anybody else? Okay. There is a need we need to go into executive session under collective bargaining section 2C2, litigation section 2C11, and under personnel 2C1. And there is a need for us to reconvene. So at this time, I need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Gray? Yes. Ford? Yes. Ranger? Yes. Tom? Yes. Acton? Yes. Parker? Yes. Okay, I need a motion to come out of executive session. to hire just Justin Fleck as a new mechanic for the village to replace the mechanic that resigned a couple weeks ago. His hourly rate is $25.44 per hour. I would make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Horn? Yes. Cranzer? Yes. Hack? Yes. Stockton? Yes. Parkour? Yes. Great. Yes. May I just make a comment about that for the public's the gentleman that left, left because he wanted to be closer to home to his family and got another job equal to the one he had here. So it makes sense for me. That's the only reason he left. Can we have one we just hired? Just as qualified. So we're good. Okay, if there's nothing else, uh, make up. No. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think you'll need one other motion, uh, Mr. Chairman, regarding authorizing village administrator to analyze and develop a personnel regarding personnel matter and consult with our labor attorney regarding the same. So moved. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? Roll call please. Cranzer? Yes. Hop? Yes. Stockton? Yes. Parkour? Yes. Gray? Yes. Mark? Yes. That's all I have now. Niels? Swells? That's all I have, sir. This time I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'm Second. Roll call, please. Stockton? Yes. Park Park? Yes. Gray? Yes. Horn? Yes. Rancher? Yes. 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 Oh, I want to hear this.